Okay. What? Oh, I'm just laughing because it's the first one. First thing I'm going to answer right here. Are we running here? Yeah, we are. I can't see. Okay. Tammy and James doing, doing videos in the car. I figured well, you was making fun of my sunglasses. <laughs> No, I like he your calls sunglasses. Me Elton all the time. No, 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 they're cute. They're very cute. You look cute today. Very cute. Um, we, hey, we, at the end of this, we're going to tell you about some fluffy babies that we've got on the ground that are, what, three days old? We'll do that at the end of the video. So those it's of you more wanna... Mother's Day evening. Late. Yes, and today is... What's today? Thursday. So that was Sunday. All right. So I was leaving because somebody's asked here, says, this was the thing I did about aspiration and ammonia. And somebody says, but what do you do if you have a bad mum? And I was thinking to myself, hopefully you had a, a good dad who can cover up your turn bad mum. Turn her into the DHS. Yeah, turn her into the DHS, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think probably a, a lifelong psychiatry work might be the answer. I don't know. I had a great mum, not alive anymore. Tam has still has a great mum, so I'm making fun of this, and I don't mean to. So what if you have a, what if you don't have a very good mum? Well, look, so... It makes life rough when you it don't does. have a good mum. It does. I mean, a, a good mum's worth her weight in... On with babies yeah yeah with, with puppies, gold right yeah. but you can turn a not very good mum into a better mum so let's just have a quick discussion about that so look here's the first thing new mums who've never had puppies before think about this they went in probably for a c-section they had no idea what's going on they come out of a c-section with a big cut on their belly that doesn't feel good they've been drugged up with anesthesia they're coming around and they've got swarming with puppies all over them no surprise they don't know what's going on you cannot expect every dog to rise to the occasion immediately can you no. so here is it's the like things human too it's right all, here's the things them all different right exactly so you know some mums are better than others instinct kicks in normally pretty quick but here's the things that we do so the first thing is if you can and we believe in our uh, well-being system we think it's the best out there it leaves mums with babies but you have to monitor things for the first what 12 hours oh well all along first <laughs> night for sure but right first night you're definitely sitting there like us we have our mama and babies in the kitchen because that's where I'm gonna hang out for a while and I've got my TV in there so I'm sitting in there so I'm hearing everything mom is doing with those babies i hear a baby cry 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 i'm tending to it i'm catching it you know johnny yeah. on the spot so most of the time a baby's crying because mom's licking on it or it's got away from mom or it's on its and back it's cold it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah but especially on its back and it yes. can't get over or whatever but, but, but the secret here is is just keep track of things for the first certainly 12 hours be very attentive for the first 12 hours to make sure there isn't a problem yeah so so then the next thing is if you can, put your mum in the environment that she's going to have the babies. We, we believe in our created system with the heated whelping kit. If you're going to use that, try to get mum in there a few days beforehand. If she's on the bed with you, and then all of a sudden you put her in a completely different environment, that's going to make it difficult for her. So just give her a chance to you know, be used to where you're going to put her. So don't just come home from a C-section, barrel her into a crate she's never been in before. She's used to sleeping on the bed with you. That's not going to be a good start. All right, so that's the first thing. Next thing is, is introduce your babies after she's woken up and had a bit of time to blow off her anesthesia if she's had a C-section. So for those of you who are having natural deliveries, it's much simpler. They don't have anesthesia on board. They don't have cuts on their bellies. They've been part of the whole birthing process. And I'm not advocating that those of you with French Bulldogs should go ahead and have natural whelps, because you shouldn't. Yeah. But those of you who've got Labradors and other dogs that have natural whelps, it's really a much easier process. Okay, so for those of you who've had C-section, the dog has been through anesthesia, it's recovering from anesthesia. Remember, it's gonna take three to five hours or more for that anesthesia to be blown off. So give her a chance to get woken up fully. Um, introduce your babies one at a time. What we do is we put some peanut butter on their bums. Well, that's if you're having problems with mama cleaning them. I just think generally it's a great idea. This well, is something that Tammy, I mean, I'm sure other people come up with it too, but this is something that Tammy started doing. Uh, I think it's well, a great what way What I do when I first introduce the mama, the, the babies to the mama, is that you hate to say the least likable puppy, but you know, You've got a two-headed, three-tailed. <laughs> you put it in your hand like dogs. this, and you cup it, Stop with that and one. have you know maybe a leg or its little back end 
take its little back end, not its head, its little back end area, and go, oh, mama, look, your babies, your babies, and she'll smell your hand, and look, and then maybe she'll start licking it, and then you're like, you go ahead and turn the whole back end to it, so maybe she is licking it and cleaning it, because it's got totally different smell now. And you've got to get past this first stage, don't you? You don't start piling babies in there until she's accepted oh, yeah. the first one. Don't yeah. just think that just because you accept the first one, it's going to be a good ending. Right, it right. Might. So I had a customer the other day. It'll take a... at least, you know, five to ten minutes introducing that part and then well, latch it on to a nipple. Right, I mean. And see so, how she reacts with it being latched on to a nipple. She may get up and not want any part of that. Right. And so, you know, you've got to win this battle, but you've got to use, um, what's the right word, uh, gentle persuasion, right? Yeah. I had, a I had a customer yeah. the other day who just come back from a C-section and introduced puppies and got two of the puppies bit immediately and had who to go back. Uh, I'm not going to give a name. I don't oh, okay. remember. Okay. But, but, it, but here's the deal. I, what I said was, look, it's not a good start, but go stick some peanut butter on their bums. Make it lick it off and just... Just right on the side of its rear. Just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, we're not taking... We're not like making a peanut Spoonful. butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> That might be a tasty little sandwich right there, but no. but the point here is, give her a chance to for her instinct to kick in. Remember that she's drugged up. Now, if you've got a dog that just flat is not going to do what you want to do, you've got, in my opinion, well, three choices. You here. keep on saying drugged up. Well, if she's drugged up, you keep your babies in that traveling incubator. That www dot love my or no, that my breeder Re supply sells. You keep the sells. babies in there. And uh, believe me, we had 11 in there, or ten. yeah, 10 in there just the other day. And we so, still use it. And we still have plenty of room, and we're still using it. Yeah, we had 10, 10 Frenchies in there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's tight, but it was fine. But the point here is, is that I think, you now see people ask me, do I need one of, one of our incubators? Yeah, you do, even if, because who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? But we use the incubator every time we have puppies. Oh, yeah. And sometimes yeah. they could be in there for quite yeah. some time. But this is not, a Q&A question for us to try and sell your product. This is a no. Q&A question to try to talk about specifically bad mums because that's the first one that came up and it's yeah. going to take the whole video just doing this. Mm -hmm. So um, I had something else I was going to say now and I'm getting old and I wish I went blank on it. But um, hmm, what was it? We were talking about... Uh well, okay, no. When no, mama's the, coming out of no, the no, no, anesthesia. This, this is what it was. Because it, it, I, I was going to say, look, sometimes you have a mum just not going to behave. Right. So what do you do? I think you've got three things that you can do here. One is, is you take the puppies away, you put them in an incubator, you raise them by hand yourself. ton of work, but yeah. it can be done. But let her come out of the anesthetic real good. Yeah, but I mean, if she's just not going to do it, right. you know, sometimes you just got a dog. So number one, take him away, put him in the bed. Number two is if you've got another mama dog who's got puppies and they're of a similar kind of age or she's still got milk, you may be able to wean those puppies she has and give her these puppies. And I've got a customer just today who started doing that with a, with a mum that didn't have any milk well, and it worked. She, yeah, the third, she, one, the third yeah. one is is muzzle them. Put a muzzle on. Don't let them be in a situation where they can physically bite a puppy. Mm -hmm. So we have never done that. Um, but I've had customers who've had problems and I've said go you can bow buy for a Frenchie with a flat nose You can buy a long muzzle. You can cut the muzzle thing off You can put some plastic wire ties in there to mm -hmm. put the whole covered up so she can get a tongue out She can still lick puppies and then you can let her get started on that and maybe she comes around But th then the last thing is what we do no, sometimes is get that. mum out on a rug Hopefully you don't have to do that. No, we're talking about the what ifs if things go wrong. Look mm -hmm. You don't want to find puppies all being bitten and killed. Now, now, I'm not saying that that's something, there we go, Phil, sorry about that. I'm not saying that that's something that's common, it's certainly not. And it's certainly, if you've got a dog that's doing that, you need to very think, think hard about whether you're going to use the dog to breed again. Yeah. So if the dog doesn't I come... <laughs> no, right, I wouldn't either. No. no. Not unless you can get the dog to come around, I wouldn't breed again. Yeah. Um, some dogs just are like that. I mean, it, we're Frenchy people. French is, it's extremely rare for this to happen, but it's not to say it can't happen. So the next thing is, is get the dogs out on the living room carpet on a blanket and lay down with her. And if she doesn't want the puppies to nurse, hold her head down, make her lay down, put the puppies on. Well, don't... you just tell her in a firm voice, yes. you are taking care of these babies. They're your babies. They're, you if know... you don't get this done, they're going to be, you're going to be the mom. Mm -hmm. And 
and, and also people are gonna like this but I can tell you the way we treated our kids if our kids dubbed, repeatedly did things they shouldn't do they got smacked it's I mean, not smack. Well, That's a horrible word. Well, I mean, they got. I mean, it was more. It was never. It was never to inflict pain. But it was always to reinforce the fact that that's not the behavior we expected. They get rewards for great behavior, and so should your dogs. And look, if the, if the dog starts... You use that word. Well, I, yeah, but if the dog starts nipping at stuff, oh, yeah. I think that requires a, a short but brief smack on the nose. Well, not, not hard. Well, what you do is you catch her muzzle when she's snipping at stuff. Yes. And apply pressure. And, uh, but, yes. But, no, oh, well, you don't have to do that. Just, yeah. Okay, so no. you're right. I, I don't want to get the impression that we start beating dogs. We don't no. ever beat dogs. We never no. would ever, ever, ever do anything to a dog that causes it physical pain other than just brief discomfort. I think that's the right word for it, right? Same thing with the kids. But she's going like, to do physical pain to a puppy, yeah. So. Yeah, well, you can't afford this, right? It's, it's, no. a, it's a short lived thing, no. and you've got to get this under control. Well, so you don't want to see it either. It's yeah. bad. So I've got a couple of. We're going up to the post, and we're just going to take care of this while we're here. Yep. Is that okay? Look, I think we've gone really long on this, so we're going to do another hey, yeah. QA about other things. So, that whole QA is about one person's question, which was what was happened if you have a bad mum, and that was from um, uh, Bridget Rose. So there you go, Bridget. You just consumed everybody's 15 or 12 minutes <laughs> with you talking about just your problems. So, uh, okay, so um, mm -hmm. another QA session coming up. We don't want to make it too long. Bye, bro. <laughs>